Question number 21. And question number 21 is very easy. It's asking about the distance between two points. And in the test, you can use the rule for the distance, which is root, if you can remember it. Difference between x squared and difference of the y squared. So the distance, 1 minus 5 plus negative 5 minus negative 2. So it's 4 squared plus negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3 squared, which is equal to 9. So first square 16, root of 25, which is equal to 5. What if you forgot the rule? What you are going to do if you forgot the rule? If you forgot the rule, you are going to do a right angle triangle. Find the distance between 1 and 5. What is the distance on the number 9 between 1 and 5? 1 and 5, the distance between them is 4. You put it here. And what is the distance from negative 5 to negative 2? From negative 5, I go up to negative 2, so I move the 3 units. So I put it through. I put x, here is the distance. So x squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is equal to 25. So x is equal to 5. So if you forgot the rule for the distance, you can use this rule. You can use this rule. Question number 22. And I'm going to explain each continuity and discontinuity in this sheet. He asked about the jump discontinuity. He asked about the jump discontinuity in one of the tests. And another version, he asked about the infinity continuity. Okay? We have many types of continuity. For example, number B, this is called an infinity continuity. Limit from infinity, here is infinity. Limit from here is negative infinity. So this one discontinues at all the points. This one is called removable continuity. But this one is continuous. Why this one is continuous? Because you can draw the whole graph without lifting the pen from the paper. You can draw the whole graph without lifting the pen from the paper. This one called a removable continuity because if you fill this point, it was open. If you fill it, you will find a continuous function. But this one is the jump continuity. Why? Because if you stop here, you need to jump to another point to make it continuous. Okay, again, we have removable continuity, we have function which is continuous, we have infinity continuity or discontinuity, sorry, and we have jump continuity. You should know the graph of each one of them. Question 23. This question uh, is about factorize, about factorization. And if you miss any part of factorization, you can go back to my YouTube channel. You have a factorization lesson there. So first, I'm going to factorize the numerator. Here, I'm going to write it as, yes, one of the students just informed me that this question was wrong in the exam. They were writing this 18 as one. Very good, yes, excellent. And the denominator here is x plus three and x minus four. This session of division, uh, sorry, this sign of division, we change it to multiplication, and we flip this fraction. We flip this fraction. So it's going to be written as x plus 3 up and x multiply x plus 6 up. So what about this? x and x. Last sign is negative, so one is positive and the other is negative. I am looking for two numbers. The product of them is 18, and the difference is 3. Of course, it's 6 and 3. The greatest take the sign of the middle. So here is 6 and here is 3. By cancel, anything in the numerator with anything in the denominator, and the x is x, the answer will be x minus 3 over x minus 4. So factorization and simplify algebraic fractions it's very important to be understand before you go. But let me clarify for you something. This function is 
undefined at x is equal negative three and x is equal four and at x is equal negative three again and at x is equal zero and at x is equal negative six. This function is undefined at four values. The denominator here, denominator and the numerator of the division. Why? Because I'm going to find the reciprocal. I'm going to find that reciprocal. Question 24. As we can see to the right, that I have a relation between X and Y. How I can decide if this relation is direct, linear, inverse, or there is no range? First, if you multiply 10 by 5 and 6 by 12, and it gives you the same value, this is a direct relation. If I multiply 10 by 5 and 12 by 6, it gives you the same value, this is a direct. So this one is not direct. If I am adding the same value of x and corresponding the same value of y, and I'm adding, for example, two in x, and then I'm adding three in y, this is a linear. But as we can see from six to five, not the same as from five to two, not the same as 12 from 30, so it's not linear. How I can define if the answer is inverse? All what you have to do to find 10 over 12. Divided by two, divided by two. And find five over six. If it's the same ratio, it's inverse relation. If it's the same ratio, it's inverse relation. Why? Because x1 over x2 is equal y2 over y1. So if this one is x1, so 10 by the 12 is equal y2 over y1 is inverse relation. When is a matrix doesn't have inverse? If you have a matrix A, A, B, C, D, determinant of this matrix is AD minus BC. If the determinant is equal to zero, the matrix has no inverse. Here is the rule. If the determinant is equal to zero, the matrix has no inverse. So all what I have to do to multiply three by k and make it equal to negative two by six to make sure that in this case, I have no inverse. No inverse, the determinant is equal to zero. So three k is equal to negative 12 divided both sides by negative by three. So k is equal to negative. Question number 26. In how many ways? we can arrange five students in a circle table. This question is a headache because you are not arranging a student in a line. You have five each year, one, two, three, four, and five. If me as Mr. Jam, I'm going to start arrange the students from here, from here. So uh, here in the next, Chair, I'm going to choose out of four students, and then out of three students, then out of two students, then the last students. But me as Mr. Hisham, if I start from here, here I will start choosing out of four, then out. Of. So this question is not five factorial. Why it's not five factorial? Why it's not five? Because you don't know on the circle which chair you are going to decide to be the first, right? So. I can consider this is the first, this is the first. So in this case, we say that the answer is n minus one factorial. So the answer is four factorial, which is four by three by two by one, and four by three is 12 by two is 24. So I can arrange 24 arrangement for these five students. Question number 27, and how to find the inverse of a function. If it's a one step function, redo it. If it's a one step function, redo it. What does it mean, Mr. Jean? If it's one step x minus two, minus two, plus two, multiply by two, divide by two. 
minus 3 plus 3 plus 4 minus 4. So if it's only one step, all what you have to do is to redo it. Just redo it. Now, what if in the exam it gives you function like this? And you wanted to find the inverse function. I prefer to write this equation equal to y. So first step, make the equation equal to y. Second step, make x as a subject. So 3x is equal y minus 2 by moving to the other side. Then divided by 3, both sides. So x is equal y minus 2 over 3. So the inverse is replacing y with x, x minus 2 over 3. Again, if it's one step, redo it. If it's a plus, minus, minus, plus, times, divided, divided times. Product, multiplication, no uh, times. But if it's two steps, you have to do four steps. Make the equation equal to y, then make x as a subject, you change x to f of negative one, and you change y to x. Or, if you are smart enough, 3x plus 2, say it like this, 3 multiply x plus 2. Go back. Go back, 3x plus 2. Go back, plus 2, tip a minus 2. Multiply 3, tip a divided 3. So that's it. Go with the equation and then redo it. 3x plus 2. So minus 2 divided 3. In one step like that. Limit. I wanted to find limit when x tends to 4 for, a, for x minus 1. All that I have to do is just replace x. So 4 by 4 minus 1, which is equal to 15, and it's an easy question. It's an easy question. Question number 29. Uh, find the derivative of root 7. The common mistake that the students put this one. Why? Because most of the students know that if f of x is equal root x, so the derivative of x is 1 over 2 root x. And they forget that, that this is a number. f of x is equal root x, and f of x is equal e bar 3, and f of x is equal 2 pi, and f of x is equal ln 2, and f of x is equal uh, 1 over 7, for example, and f of x is equal cubic root of, of 3 or 31, all of this list, the derivative is 0. All of this list, the derivative is 0. Why? Because all of these are numbers, constant. And the derivative of constant is equal to 0. So don't rush your work and choose directly B. Take it easy. If it's a number, the number, its derivative is always equal to 0. Question number 30. The perimeter of two similar triangles is 32 and 24. This is perimeter of the first triangle. This is perimeter of the second triangle. And the length of the greatest side in the first triangle is 8. So this is side 1. And the length of the corresponding side, then what is the length of the corresponding side of the second triangle? You should know that the ratio between the perimeters of the triangle is the same as the ratio between the sides. So let's figure out the ratio between the perimeters. 32 to 24 divided by 8 is 4 divided by 8 is 3. So I can say that the ratio between side 1 to side 2 is 4 to 3. And side 1 is equal to x. So what the value of side 2? Side or x will be 3 by 8 divided by 4. So I can say that 4 S2 is equal to 24. So S2 is equal to 6. So the second side is equal to 6. And by the way, if you are smart enough, you can say that ratio between the perimeter and the ratio between the sides. So 32 over 24 is equal 8 over side 2. And if you can do cross multiplication or simplify, you can figure out the answer there.
Question number 31. In the, what is the coordinates of the point? Some students found this question a little bit difficult, but I don't think that. This one, this height from the point T to the point M is corresponding to the height from the point zero to the point C. So what if I want to move from the point T to the point M? I will move up C, okay? And what is the distance here? Distance here is A. So distance here is A. So distance here is A. So I move the same distance, A. So if I stopped at the point B and I wanted to move to A, I'm going to add a horizontal translation A and vertical translation C. So I'm going to move it B plus A because I stopped at the point B and I need to move the point here, B plus A. And then I'm going to go up C. So it's B plus A and C. Something else. The point M is the last point of the curve. So of course it's not subtraction. So cancel A and C. And the change happened, C is doesn't belong to the x-axis. Doesn't belong to the x-axis. So logically or mentally, you can solve the question by canceling one of the choices. Question 32. And I'm expecting that you will have an integration question like this. Integral from two to three for four x plus one. Of course, you have two methods to solve this one. If you are good in graphing, you can graph the straight line and replace it. If you are good in integration, you can go with integration. I will go with the integration. Integral from two to three for four x plus one dx is equal. In integration, we are adding one to the power and we divide by the new power. The power here is one. So it's gonna be four X square. I add one to the power and I divide it by the new power is two. And the integral of any number is X, same number in X. Integral of two is two X, integral of three, three X. From two to three. And I can rewrite it as four over two. It's two X square plus X from two to three. As you notice, that in the SAAT or Tahsili test, you will find some questions that you can solve it in less than one minute and some questions that needs one minute. But the average for each question is about or around one minute. Then I'm going to replace X with three and then replace X with two and find the difference between them. Two multiply three square plus three and then replace X with two square plus two. So it's 21, three squares nine, nine by two is 18, plus three is 21 minus, two squares four by two is eight, plus two is 10, which is equal to 11. My advice to you to write some question or integration, simple one, and to do these steps of work. Question 33. What is the image of the point B that translate the point X, Y to the point X plus four and Y minus five? So I can write here that the translation, which you translate X to X plus four, I add four. And from Y to Y minus five, I subtract five. So I go to the point B. And I add the translation. So B dash with the image, two plus four is six, three minus five is negative two. So it's a six and minus two. Question number 34. Find the greatest angle in measure of the following figure, in the following figure. Don't calculate the measure of the angles. Just look about the exterior angle. The angle four and three are interior angle in this triangle. But the angle two is an exterior angle of the triangle. 
and the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two interior non-adjacent to it. So don't try to calculate what is the measure of two, what the measure of three, what the measure of one, because you will figure out that measure of angle two is the greatest angle. Measure of angle two is the greatest measure of angle, greatest measure of angle. Okay, you wanted to calculate it, it's okay, go ahead, but you will figure out that this is the greatest. Now, I have an isosceles trapezoid. I have Sorry for that, but I, I thought that one is not in the choices. I thought that one is not in the choices, so I know that the exterior angle is greater than the measure of the two interior angle non adjacent to it. But by calculating the angle two is 55, and the angle here 30, so angle A is 95, and angle three and four is smaller than angle two, which is equal to 55, so the greatest angle is not two, the greatest angle is one. And if one is was in, in the choices, and if the graph was like that, the greatest angle is two. The greatest angle is two. Now, let's go to the meaning of isosceles trapezoid and isosceles trapezium or trapezoid. What is the isosceles trapezoid? It's a trapezium and trapezium two parallel bases. With two base our angles are equal. Two base angles are equal. And diagonals are equal. Diagonals are equal. This base, we call it a middle base. And the length of this base is the average of these two parallel bases. Let me draw for you a few. This base is x, this base is y. So this one is an average. So it's x plus y over 2. So I know that 2x minus 2, when I add it to 14, when I add these two parallel bases, and I divided the answer by 2, it will give me 18. 2 by 18 is 36. 2x minus 2 plus 14 is 2x plus 12. So 2x is equal to 24 after moving the 12 to the other side. So x is equal to 12. But don't forget that in the isosceles trapezoid, base angles are equal, diagonals are equal, and this base is called a middle base. What is the range of the graph function? And I give you this graph because I have two points here. And the meaning of two points, there is a big difference between when you have a curve and you have an arrow, this arrow, its limit is infinity and negative infinity. And when you have a point at the end, point at the end, it means that it's limited at zero and the maximum point here is four. So which one of these? Is it C or D? Of course, it's not A. It could be B, no, because I'm taking the point from zero to four. Is it closed or point? This point is closed, as we can see. This point is closed, so it's zero and four. But if I'm asked about the increase interval, it's this part. I'm looking at the x-axis. So it's from zero, and zero is closed, Two, two, but two here is open. Why? Why it's open? Because this is a turning point. And decreasing interval, which is this part, I am looking to the x-axis, from two open to four closed. So notice that there is a big difference between increasing interval, decreasing interval, and range of a function, and range of a function. Yes. Now, find the sum to infinity uh, of the geometric sequence. 
for the geometric sequence, sum to infinity is repeated more than one times. And sum to infinity is equal a one, which is the first term over one minus r. And what is one minus r? One minus r is common ratio. R is the common ratio, the number that you multiplied or you divided by each time. And to, to define that is to infinity, the common ratio r, its absolute value should be smaller than zero. Smaller than, sorry, between zero and one. Smaller than one, it's absolute value. And every time you are dividing by two or dividing by three, multiply by third, multiply by half and so on. Mr. Shem, how I can figure out where is A1 here? To figure out where is A1, you are going to replace K with one. So it's two over three to the power of one minus two, which is two over three to the power of negative one. And if you have the power negative, you flip the fraction. So it's a three over two. Now, where is the common ratio? The common ratio is written two over three, because every time you are going to multiply by two over three. So R is equal to two over three. So I want to find S infinity. So S, in, S infinity is equal to A1 over one minus two over three. How I can simplify this? It's a three over two. And one can be written as three over three minus two over three, which is one over three. So numerator by the last denominator, denominator by Numerator, so it's nine over two. Again, if you have A over B divided C over D, it's equal AD over BC. Number uh, 38, if the given two triangles are similar and similar angles are Congruent sides are proportional. So since they are similar, you should locate where are the sides. This side opposite to 30. This side opposite to 30. So I can see that A over 6 equal 4 over 3. So what the value of A? Of course, multiply. So I can say that it's 4 by 6 divided by three is equal to eight. Of course, I will find some students say, the Mr. Jam, why are you doing this? Three is half the six. So four is half the eight, very good. Some students say that six is double the three. So A is double the four, very good, excellent. But why I wrote for you this ratio, in case of the ratio is not half, you will be able to write the proportional and you will be able to solve the question. Question number 39 in the Given figure, where is the figure? Where is the figure? I don't know where the figure is. Maybe I forgot to add the figure. I'm very sorry. Question number 40. Find the angle. Oh, here is the figure. In the given figure, find the value of x. This side is a tangent. And don't forget that. This side is 5, but the whole length is what is 9. The whole length is 9. So we say that x to the power of 2 is equal. The small side multiply the whole side. So x squared is equal to 45. So x is equal root of 45 and x is equal approximately root of 45. It's supposed to be what? It's supposed to be uh, 6 point something. It's not 7, about 6.5. Unfortunately, we can't find one of the answers here. So I will correct this question later. Question number 41. One of the difficult questions in vector, how to find the angle between two vectors. If this is a difficult one, I know it. Because to find the angle between two vectors, you should find the inverse cosine of the dot product of the two vectors divided by the magnitude of the two vectors multiplied together. Dot product, it means first 
by first, which is root three multiply zero, plus second by second. So the answer in the numerator is four, because zero multiplied by root three is zero. And then magnitude of u, it means root of root three square plus one square. Multiply magnitude of v, it means the root of zero square plus four square. Root three square is three, and three plus one is four, so it's root four, and root four is two. And this is root of 16, which is equal to four. So it's four over eight. And we forgot the cosine inverse. So it's a cosine inverse of four over eight, which is the cosine inverse of half. Now, which angle that its inverse cosine is half is the angle 60 degrees. So the angle between these two vectors is equal to 60 degrees. I think this is one of the difficult questions in the exam. Now, I'm going to, went through, to go through some questions on the uh, uh, trigonometry faster, uh, because I know that uh, you have a problem with trigonometry, so I'm going to do my best to solve it here, inshallah. What is the radian measure and the degree measure? What if I wanted to find the radian and the degree is 30? And the other one, degree, and I give you the radian. If you want to find the radian and you have the degree, all what you have to do is to divide it 30 by 180 and multiply the answer by 1. Divide the angle by 180 and multiply the answer by 1. Cancel 0 with 0. Divide it by 3 up. Divide it by 3 down. So it's 1 over 6. Question 42. The degree measure of this one. What if I wanted to find the degree measure? All what I have to do is replace pi with 180. This is supposed to be 6. If it's a 3, so cancelled. So it's 180. But what if it's a 3 pi over... Uh, six for example not over five over four or if it's two pi over three for example so two multiply 180 divided by three 180 divided by three is 60 so it's two multiplied by 60 which is equal to 100 another question what is the sine inverse of the angle root two over two and sine inverse it means i'm asking which angle that its sign is equal root 2 over 2. Anything related to root 2 over 2, the angle is 45. Anything related to root 2 over 2, the angle is 45. Question number 44. Cosine the angle is equal root 3 over 2. So what is the measure of the angle? This one, the same as saying that what is cosine inverse of root three over two. Which angle that its inverse or its cosine is root three over two? We know that sine of the angle 30 is equal to half. So cosine of the angle 60 is root three over two. Now from the other side, write cosine, cosine 60. From the other side, write sine. So sine 60. So the angle is equal to 60 because cosine 60 is equal to root 3 over 2. Another question and one of the important rule in the exam is the Pythagorean identity. That sine square of any angle plus cosine square for the same angle is equal to 1. So if it's a sine square of x plus cosine square of x or sine square of y plus cosine square of y, this one is equal to one. So nine minus one, which is equal to root eight. Of course, root eight is not root 10, and then it's root, root two. The answer is two, root two. Why? Because root eight is four by two, and four outside the root is two, so it's two root.
value of the matrix sine, sine, cosine, cosine. And the meaning of the value of the matrix A, A, B, C, D, the meaning in the determinant, which is AD minus BC. So if I want to find this determinant, sine by sine, which is sine square minus cosine by cosine, which is negative cosine square. Negative by negative is positive. So it's a sine square X plus cosine square X, which is equal to one. Question 47, tan is negative, cosine is positive. We all know what is A, S, T, C. A, it means all, sine, cosine, and tan are positive in the first quadrant. S is for sine, sine is only the positive value in the second quadrant. Tan for the third quadrant, cosine for the fourth quadrant. So the tan is negative, I put right. Here is negative, here is negative the tan. Cosine is positive, here and there. So both of them were, both of them are in the fourth quadrant. So the angle lies in the fourth quadrant. Why? Because the cosine is positive and the tan is negative. Question 48, theta is greater than zero, smaller than 90, and it means that it's an acute angle. Sine and cosine and tan are all positive. Its sign is equal to half. So, without drawing the triangle, we just said that a few minutes ago. We just said that sine 30 is equal to half. By going from the other side, so cosine 60 is also equal to half. So, I know that theta is equal to 60 degrees. So what if I wanted to find cosine of its half? So I wanted to, to find cosine 30, and cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. Again, cosine 30 is root 3 over 2, the same as sine 60. So which angle that its cosine is half, it's that 60. So I want to find theta over 2, so it's a cosine 30. Question 49. The angle lies in the third quadrant. And the cosine is equal 1 over 3. In this case, I gotta draw a right angle triangle. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Why? Sukatula. So if the angle is here, it's adjacent is one, the hypotenuse is three. How I can find this side? I know that one square plus x square is equal to three square. So x square is equal to eight. So x is equal to two. So this side is two. two. I want to find what? I want to find the sign. But the angle in the third quadrant, the angle is in the third, uh, four, so fourth quadrant. Sorry, fourth quadrant. The angle is in the fourth. And ASTC, it means that the sign here is negative. So the answer cannot be A, cannot be D, could be B or C. But how I could have positive and negative? I don't have positive and negative, right? So I may cancel C. So I am sure that the answer, answer is B because the sign is opposite over hypotenuse. And why it's negative? Because the angle lies in the fourth quadrant. So logically, without drawing the triangle, with, without finding the side, if you know the rule of ASTC, you can figure out the answer in less than one minute. But I show you the steps of working, to make sure that you're doing right. Unfortunately, last question for today, cosine is negative. And the angle lies in the fourth quadrant. It could be in the first, second, third, and fourth. But I know that A, S, T, C, the cosine is negative, is in the second and the third, cannot be in the first or the second. So I'm going to cancel the idea of A, and I'm going to cancel the idea of D, because I have a solution. Which of these two choices that lies in the second and the third 
I will figure out that it's B. What if I have two choices right? I may use the reference angle. What is the reference angle? I may ask myself, what is the angle that its cosine is equal to 3 over 2? The angle that its cosine is equal to 3 over 2 is the 30. Its reference here is 180 minus 30, which is equal to 150. And its reference here is 180 plus 30, which is equal to 110. And its reference here is 360 minus 30, which is equal to 330. So I'm going to choose these two angles. So the right choices is B.